In June 2014, the Caribbean Development Bank brought together 30 trade policymakers at its headquarters in Barbados for a four-day seminar on gender mainstreaming in trade policies and programs. The regional workshop, co-hosted by the CDB and the International Trade Center, aimed at raising the awareness of the value of integrating gender analysis and gender-sensitive approaches into trade and development planning. Gender mainstreaming is a strategy. It's, it's uh, made up of processes, systems, ways of doing things um, that, are, um, that are used by organizations, institutions, governments. Yeah? And, and therefore for us, the, when, when, when you introduce, when we say introduce gender analysis into those processes and all specific actions of doing things, planning, budgeting and so on, then we arrive at some strategic actions to be taken along the way. And of course gender mainstreaming also will have specific kinds of outputs and outcomes which will contribute in the long term to gender equality. For the CDB, the emphasis on promoting greater gender analysis in policy design, both at the CDB level as well as among its member countries, is a critical focus at this juncture. We also have a time when there is interest in developing trade policies, export strategies, services sector policies, okay, at the, at the regional level or the national level. So work has started in, in different countries, different degrees in terms of completion, in terms of export strategies, whether it's starting new strategies, revising existing strategies, developing the services sector policies, looking at overall trade policies. So there's a lot of interest. So in terms of momentum, there is the momentum. So in terms of integrating gender into the trade policies and trade strategies, there is a, a good platform to build on. But it's also important for policymakers to understand and to feel our passion for these gender issues and, and why this is so important for not only for them, but for their children, their grandchildren, their wives, their daughters, aunts, grandmothers. But beyond that, if we're actually able to mainstream gender into everything that we do, it doesn't only benefit young girls. It will actually benefit young boys as well. The seminar exposed the trade experts to a wide range of presentations and practical approaches which all serve to make a case for the significance of gender mainstreaming. More than 21 percent of the region's population currently lives below the poverty line. That's two out of ten. Two out of ten. And our national economies need to grow faster if unemployment and poverty rates are to fall substantially. Now, that growth can only take place through successful entrepreneurship. It is the success at the micro levels that will determine the success at the macro levels. The macro economy, I mean, is a composite of the micro economy. If we look at the latest IMF economic outlook, we're talking about April 2014 for the region, it is said that the Caribbean continues to face a challenging economic environment marked by low growth, high indebtedness, and financial fragilities. In education, girls are outperforming boys. This fact overshadows assessments of gender equality issues in the Caribbean. Yeah? Yet, women are more likely to be unemployed, they are more likely to be underemployed, and earn overall considerably less than men in the Caribbean. Upwards to 50% of poor households are headed by women, and those poor households are more likely to be unemployed and underemployed than those poor households headed by men, and they are more likely to be much larger than poor households headed by men. Over the four days, the seminar proved to be an eye-opener for many of the Caribbean delegates. So right now, I'm going to be working on our national development plan. It's more than likely it's going to be a 20 or 25 year plan um, that will gear our development over the, the next um, generation. And in that regard, what I've learned over the last um, two days will now um, 
trained me, has trained me to look at the development issues in a different way um, so that across all sectors we can have gender issues in place. When we review the education strategy and plan, we can see some level of gender mainstreaming in that document because it speaks to the issues of, of boys and girls and the whole education system and that is being addressed in that strategy and action plan. However, in the other policies, we see a silence on the whole issue of gender mainstreaming. And I think some of the recommendations are broad enough that it's not too late to include um, that component in it to, for us to be able to um, realize the gains, the economic gains from including gender mainstreaming in our policies. One of the key learnings was from the Uganda um, trade policy. And I think this is something we can learn from to ensure that there is some significant um, allocation of resources to develop women in business. So going forward in the implementation of our trade policy, it's to ensure that gender is infused in the implementation process. We have made some progress in, in gender mainstreaming, but yet there's still much to be done. Um, we have a bureau, a Department of Gender and Family Affairs. Training is necessary and learning that there's a, a pillar, pillars of support. Um, I think the registered um, BSOs, business service organizations in Antigua and Barbuda, um, certainly would help in that respect. Being more engaging as well in the regional process, um, accessing um, the regional organizations like the CPBC, um, certainly as well would help um, Antigua and Barbuda on the ground. I think data is a problem on a, on a overall in the world. So we we have we have data, but now we have to we need data data that is gender specific. So uh, now we, there is a regional program or a, or a regional project that will help us also. It is also important that with um, data aggregation, we do it in every sector as much as possible because a lot of times we have for the agricultural sector agricultural exports we have um, hucksters that are mainly women and we can say that this trade is gender insensitive however if we go through it properly we may find that there are both men and women in the export of agricultural produce by day four, the seminar ended with the delegates actively indicating their commitment to the process, agreeing to a proposed position paper, which was a critical outcome for both the ITC and CDB. The position paper articulates the, 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 the national government's commitment under various agreements to gender equality, that the participants are recognising the value of a gender analysis, of the gender sensitive value chain analysis as well, that looks not only at the product, but the people. Um, also, the utility of the collection of sex disaggregated data, and then the recommendations um, accordingly are along those lines that we take, undertake gender analysis to inform our policies and programming, um, that we collect sex disaggregated data, and that we build the capacity of those in our ministries, in our departments, in our agencies to be able to undertake these analyses and apply that to the design of programs and projects um, accordingly and that appropriate funds or adequate funds <laughs> are channeled in this direction as well. It's been a most, most, most uh, rewarding workshop and it's always a pleasure uh, to work with the Caribbean Development Bank.